Hey, what up, guys? This is Danny B. You're watching the Trash Dish, and in this video, I'm going to be ranking the uh, Puppet Master movies. So the Puppet Master movies are classic. Um, I actually never seen a bunch of them. I seen part one and part three back in the day, and then also I've seen a bunch of other Full Moon stuff. Like I was always more of a fan of like Shrunken Heads and Dark Angel: The Ascent, but um, I decided I want to watch all these and check them out and see how they are and stuff. So, so there's 14 of these movies, and I watched all of them, even the ones I seen before. And uh, here's what I thought. Coming up at number 14 is going to be uh, Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys. Uh, this one just was a very kind of badly made movie. They made this for Sci-Fi Channel. This has uh, Corey Feldman in it. And uh, his voice in it sounds like Christian Bale's Batman. And I'm kind of wondering, this came out like a year before. I'm, I'm sure this didn't happen, but um, I, I kind of, like in the back of my mind, I was like, did, did Christian Bale see this movie and get his idea for Batman's voice from Corey Feldman. They're obviously, they're trying to cash in on like the Freddy vs. Jason stuff. And um, I don't know. It just, it, it was pretty badly made. Um, it does have a decent pacing, but just overall, just a bad movie. I didn't like it. All right, coming up at number 13 is going to be Puppet Master Legacy. This is the uh, clip show. And it actually is a good clip show. It's got a little bit of an original story, but not really much. It, it just kind of like tells, retells like how... The um, continuity is supposed to go from beginning to end because the continuity kind of like jumps back and forth through the series. So it's like, all right, if you want to make complete sense of it, here it is. Or if, I think really what it is is just like, uh, if you want like some cool puppet scenes, throw this on. All right, coming up at number 12 is going to be part two, Puppet Master 2. Um, this one, this is a lot of people's favorites. Uh, I tried to get into it, but it, just, it was too slow for me. I just didn't really like it too much. It's got some cool kill scenes. Torch is in it, which is good because Torch is a very cool puppet. And it's, I think he's only in like maybe one other one besides this. But like the stuff about like resurrecting Toulon and bringing him back is like, and now he's like a psychopath. I just didn't really like it so much. But the kill scenes are very cool. The puppets are very cool. So that's number 12, part 2. Right, coming up at number 11 is going to be part 5. And part 5, uh, it's not bad, but it's just unnecessary. Like, you get the whole... Part 4 and part 5 are connected. And you get pretty much the whole story, all you need out of part 4. And then part 5 is basically like... Oh, and here's what happened the uh, the other two hours of the day after what after part four ended. Plaza is pretty boring, honestly. It's just people wandering around the Bodega Bay Hotel and um, trying to kill the little monsters, the little demon monsters. So yeah, part five didn't really do it for me. Right, coming up at number ten is going to be part six. Uh, Curse of the Puppet Master. So I was reading the trivia on this one and it said like this one incorporates a ton of like old footage, like reused footage of the puppets in this one. And I was like, okay, good. And then it'll have way more puppet scenes. But no, it didn't. It just go kind of goes into like a boring love story between this gas station guy and this guy's uh, niece or granddaughter or whatever she is. And I was like, I don't care about this shit. The uh, kill scenes with the puppets are pretty cool. But other than that, though, I don't know. The ending is cool. The rest of it, eh, kind of average, I don't know. All right, coming up at number nine is part seven, Retro Puppet Master. This is like a prequel before the uh, other prequels. This goes all into like Toulon's uh, first, uh, first encounter with the puppets. So I actually like this one. So this one doesn't have like the like the famous puppets. It's it's got them in like one scene in the beginning, but it kind of has like their prototypes. They look pretty bad they're not very cool looking except for dr death dr death is a very cool puppet oh this also has uh the dude from the room greg sistaro who played mark you know like oh hi mark but yeah if you want more backstory on uh toulon this is pretty cool for that all right coming up at number eight is the littlest reich so this was the reboot so this one definitely has some cool kill scenes and stuff like that but um it just this wasn't made by full moon and it doesn't have the same charm that a full moon movie has there's stuff i like about this movie and stuff i don't like i don't like the story it just i don't know it didn't do it for me i don't like the characters they're just too 
I don't know. They they have like that stupid fucking humor to them. I don't know. And this is maybe just a personal pet peeve, but I always kind of hate when they like make a main character a comic book store owner. Like it just seems like they're trying too hard to like like throw something out for the fans like, "Oh, you'll relate to this guy. He owns comic books." So yeah, I don't know. I I didn't like the main character. I didn't like anything about this uh about the character or the stories. And then plus they made the puppets Nazis. They made the uh Tulana Nazi and the puppets Nazis. I don't want to root for fucking Nazis. So yeah, I, I didn't like that aspect of it, but it does have some cool kill scenes and it is like one of the more faster paced Puppet Master movies. So it's not boring or anything. It's just, I didn't really like it so much. But that's number eight, Little Strike. And I should say that this is the other one that has Torch in it. And he's probably the best puppet in this movie too. All right, coming up at number seven is gonna be the original part one. This is, um, this is a good one, but it does have some like weird stuff going on with this psychic dancing around in a fucking um, mask and stuff. And I don't know. It's a little bit weird uh, and kind of hard to follow. And um, a little bit boring too, honestly. But you know, it was the first one, so it gets a break on that stuff. And, uh, and I love the puppets. And um, it's got some kill scenes. I think this one and part two and the Littlest Reich are the only ones where the puppets are like actually evil. Well, they're not evil, but what it is is that Tulan died right in the beginning, and then a new guy took him over, and he was evil. So, yeah, it's not my favorite. Um, I like more, like, when the puppets are good guys. Kind of like vigilante puppets. But um, it's decent. So, number seven, part one. All right, from this point on, these are the ones that I really kind of liked, and um, I'm probably going to rewatch these more often. Coming up at number six is Axis of Evil, and I love the Axis trilogy. Uh, this one is kind of a slower one, but it's the first one. Uh, very cool characters in this one, and um, it takes place right after uh, Tulan dies in the first one. Like, the first one, it has a flashback scene, and then it goes to years later, and the puppets are still in the hotel. This one takes place immediately after he commits suicide. Basically, this kid that works in the hotel, um, who has, uh, he's a polio survivor, he finds the puppets, and now he's gonna um, take on the Nazis with him. <laughs> So yeah, I like the story of this one. It is um, a little bit slower. doesn't have enough of the puppets, in my opinion. But I, I like the story and characters. So, number six, Axis of Evil. Alright, coming up at number five is Axis Termination. And this one, um, you wouldn't even really have to count this as part of the Axis trilogy. Uh, unless you really want to. But it doesn't continue the story from the first two. It has continuity with them, but I don't want to give away spoilers, but... You could skip this one if you really want to. So the new characters in this movie, I, I didn't really like them so much. Um, and it turns out, I was looking up, I was like, what has this other actor been in? Because basically, he kind of looks like Peter Dinklage. And I was thinking, like, are they trying to cash in? Because this was made right when, um, what's that HBO show? Game of Thrones was on the air and it was a big hit. So I was like, are they trying to get like a bootleg Peter Dinklage to be in this thing and he, it turns out that this guy was in another full moon movie called Tower uh, Ravenwolf Towers and it turns out all the characters were so they, this is like a crossover movie with Ravenwolf Towers so yeah I don't know they're kind of they're like these psychics and I don't know it, it was kind of a goofy story but it is it does have a lot more action than the first one so that's why it's a little higher on my list and I like the villain. The um, the Nazi chick villain is very cool in this. It has a lot more of the puppets and the puppets um, slaughtering Nazis and stuff like that. Plus it's got like the new villain puppets which are very cool. I like them. Even though the story is the worst of the Axis trilogy, it's still got uh, more entertainment value for me than um, the first one. So that's number five, Axis Termination. All right, coming up in number four is part four. And this is the most family-friendly Puppet Master. This almost feels like they're trying to go for like a PG-13 rating or something. Uh, very little gore in this and stuff. But the cinematography is cool. Um, I like the story. The action scenes are very cool. And I actually do like the characters a lot in this. Like the, um, the main guy looking over the Bodega Bay Hotel. And then you got like the total douchebag character who's always whining about everything. And I was dying laughing when... Um, Tulan resurrects like as a puppet it just looks hilarious to me like they put they superimpose a video of Tulan's face 
onto a puppet and he's like speaking to the new puppet master. He's like, I am with you, puppet master. It's very hilarious. And then you got this really bad uh, puppet villain in, I don't know if he's in space or what, but he's the demon and he's like sending other demons as many puppet demons to kill the puppet i don't know what's going on in this but it is a lot of fun you got the puppets playing laser tag and shit it's pretty hilarious all right coming up at number three is iron cross blade the iron cross the newest one so this one is a spinoff where it doesn't feature all the puppets they're in it but they don't do anything only blade moves around and stuff and uh this actually continues from the axis um, trilogy like it's the daughter from the third one and she has the puppets now, and um, and then the Nazis capture her, and Blade is coming to her rescue, basically. Yeah, this one was pretty cool. It's, it's got some zombies in it. Um, a little bit slower, but the ending is amazing. I love the ending for this one. Yeah, I really had a lot of fun with this one. Iron Cross, check this one out. All right, coming up at number two is Axis Rising. And this is the uh, second story in the Axis trilogy, and in my opinion, this is the best one. They got different actors play the um, characters from the first one, but I, I think the second actors, the ones on this one, do a better job, honestly. And you got a lot more action. The main villain is this Nazi. He's a pretty good actor. Um, and then you got this bootleg Ilsa She-Wolf of the SS character, and she's fucking smoking hot in this. Every scene she's in, she's very nice to look at. Yeah, I love her character. And then you got this um, like Nazi scientist guy who's not a bad bad guy he's just being like manipulated by the nazis to do this shit they basically they have his family hostage and then he's coming up with his own versions of the puppets and basically they have um they kidnap tunneler so the puppets are going to rescue tunneler and then you got this like super corny uh drill not drill sergeant but sergeant guy american sergeant and he's Kind of, he's like so cheesy in his performance that he's funny. And you also got this awesome scene of like the bad puppets massacring the whole, um, the U.S. Army and stuff. It's very cool. And you also got like some people like melting in this, like slime coming out of their face and shit. Yeah, this one's really fun. I like this one. So that's number two, Axis Rising. And coming up at number one is part three. And this is by far the best Puppet Master movie. This is even way better than anything in the Axis trilogy. And so this is about uh, Toulon, the Puppet Master, and how he was kind of persecuted for making fun of, like, Adolf Hitler. Like, he was doing these puppet shows where he was, like, calling Hitler an idiot and, like, Six Shooter was <laughs> killing Hitler and stuff in it. And so the, the Nazis found out about it and tried to, like, take his puppets away, close his business down and shit like that. And then, um... They end up killing his wife, and now he's out for revenge. And they filmed this one. I believe they filmed this one in Romania, and, like, the scenery is awesome. It looked... Because it's authentic buildings and stuff. It's not, like, movie sets. So it looks very cool. You got very good acting in this. The guy that plays Toulon is awesome. Uh, the guy... The main Nazi guy, uh, Richard Lynch, is awesome in this. He, I always remember that guy from Invasion USA. He, he plays an excellent bad guy. I was just talking to someone about this. Like, that guy's an awesome bad guy. I think this one had the highest budget, so you got some like awesome uh, stop motion animation and stuff in this. Like Six Shooter, when he pulls his guns out, you see his fingers wiggle around and stuff. It's very cool. And that's another thing. This one introduces Six Shooter, who's my favorite puppet. Uh, I love when he laughs. He goes like, eh, 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 eh. And you got like six shooter taking out the like climbing up buildings, assassinating Nazis. One dude falls out a window. It's very awesome. And you even got like some zombies in this movie. The um, scientist guy is resurrecting people, and they're like very cool looking zombies. Like one immediately puts a gun in his mouth and like tries to commit suicide, even though he's dead already. Yeah, this one is overall just the most enjoyable, and it has probably my favorite ending in the whole series too. So that's number one, Puppet Master Part Three. And if you were gonna watch these series like i would just say watch part three watch the axis trilogy and then watch blade the iron cross and then throw part four in there if you want something different than any of those but that's like kind of like the storyline i like hey right, guys this is denny b you're watching the trash stash let me know your favorite puppet master movies let me know what your favorite puppets are uh hit the like button comment and subscribe peace out